radio show is more important than any other mainstream media outlet that exists. Man of Breakfast Club. Don't play with it, don't play with it, don't play with it. Come on, baby, don't play with it. Break the blue sky. You think I'm coming here when this shit ain't hot? DJ Envy and Charlemagne the God. Being here next to all of you guys, it's really big. It's one of my favorite shows to do. Just because y'all always keep it 100, y'all keep it real. But what better place than, than here? I think everybody should go on the breakfast club and start That's with that if you want to shake it up. It's time. It's time. It's time. The breakfast club. The breakfast club. It's very, 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 very big. It's you guys are changing the entire scene of the culture of life. Well, y'all done came a long way. They might not watch the news, but, you know, they're listening to the breakfast club. Who to go? Let's go. DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, and Charlemagne the God. Y'all are like a mega force. Breakfast Club, that's how we get our day started. Right now. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 yo,
Yeah, this is a, a really, really good, important thing, I think. Uh, $2 billion, they sued over, some parents got together and sued over the COVID pandemic learning loss uh, for their students. So parents, students, community groups got together. They sued California to help Black and Latino kids recover from educational losses during the pandemic. Take a listen. The state just agreed to spend $2 billion on tutors, extended school days, mental health support, and more for kids who suffered most during remote learning, predominantly low-income black and Latino kids, who are now not bouncing back as fast as kids in whiter, more affluent districts. The most pressing crisis in America today is what happened to kids during COVID. And hopefully this settlement will be a model for 49 other states. Such a great lawsuit, man. People would never talk yep. about the impact that, uh, you know, that remote learning had on kids, Horrible. the impact it had on parents, and then they Horrible. just want to put them back in the system and act like things were normal. I know some yeah. kids who never even went back to school. They just decided to stay do, doing home Rem homeschool. Because really? that was yeah. an remote option. learning. Yeah. That well, was see, the, an option. The problem with it is a lot of these kids actually didn't learn. So now that they're back in school and they went up a grade, you know, because they you know went to the next grade. They stupid. They still didn't learn the stuff from the last grade. Excuse me. That's not right. <laughs> I don't mean stupid like they stupid, but they just stupid. Yeah, dumb. they stayed on a level <laughs> where you right know, you because where, they never learned. Like yeah, you know, your yeah. kids on remote I, learning, they're not watching the, the screen. They're yeah. playing video games. They're playing with their siblings. Mm -hmm. They're watching the birds outside. They could mm -hmm. care less about that. You yeah, know? and it's a damn shame they had to sue uh, in order to get it done. You know, this should have been something that should have automatically uh, been some, particularly in California, because they that those are one of the states that kept them out the longest. Some of the more conservative states, like Texas, for example, went back right away, or at least you had the option to go back. Mm -hmm. just want to give you a couple of facts on that. Curriculum Associates indicated that children uh, who were significantly below grade level by two or more years, they were already below, then the numbers went even lower um, during 2000, uh, after the pandemic, and those numbers have not picked back up, so they're continuing to lose ground. So this is a really, really big thing. Kind of going to our conversation yesterday, you know, when we talked about uh, where resources should be directed and how, uh, you know, folks want to make sure that we're taking care of what's happening in America. And this is a big, big, big thing, especially when you look at kids and how we uh, compare to other countries. Uh, we're significantly lower mm -hmm. on grade level. So this is a, a big, big thing, and I, I'm glad that worked out. Uh, for those in California. Yeah, Tez, one of the biggest mistakes that I, I think that I made as a parent is I pulled Jackson out so early, right? As soon as I heard COVID, mm -hmm. I pulled all my kids out. And Jackson yeah. was in kindergarten. I thought Jackson would be the easiest because I'm like, kindergarten, they don't do yeah. nothing in play. But kindergarten mm -hmm. nowadays is they learn, it's the basics. They learn mathematics. Yeah. They learn yeah. a multiplication. They learn so much. So when I pulled him out and now when he went back to school, he was so far behind because these other kids mm -hmm. noticed stuff. And I had to, you know, we had to get tutors. We had to go through the mm -hmm. learning of doing kindergarten and first grade. Yep. Uh, and he was behind. It was very difficult so for him, and even in class. Mm -hmm. And now when he goes back to class and these other kids know the, know the work, they know the additions, they know the readings, they know all this. And he kindergarten, the they learn all that? Yes. In yes, like it's a major. It's that's totally like a, different. Yeah, and especially I mean, that was a big funding that they did in politics on kindergarten and pre-K. My daughter was in the eighth grade. I only kept her out one semester. I sent her back because she was already trying to catch up because she had a tutor, uh, a substitute teacher her entire fifth grade year for math. Mm. So basically, she didn't learn anything in the fifth grade because it was a sub. They right. played the whole year. So it took like two years to me to get her on track. And I was like, there's no way I can have her sit out a semester. So she went back. You know, uh, you had the option to stay home. But I sent her back because I just know that would have been critical, you know, for her doing yeah. that, that eighth grade year. What did you je uh, do, Jess? Because everybody here got kids. I'm curious. What did you do? Man, when during the pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. my son, he actually, we, me and his dad, Rome, stayed on him like he, because he started streaming more. He start, he tried the the, mm -hmm. the game thing and you know Fortnite and all of that stuff. But we we had to sit with him for like the first three months. Like, no, mm -hmm. make sure you do your work and then do all of this. But it makes them lazy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It makes them not even want to go back to school. But then after a while, he got bored. Like, all right, I want to see my friends. Like, because mm -hmm. it, it helps their social status That's too. Right. Like being in school and being actually around other kids. Yep. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it 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 has its perks. It has its disadvantages and it, and advantages. Yeah, and you gotta. That's why you know educating your kids at home is so important too. But I'm gonna mm -hmm. tell you why they need them teachers, man. They need them teachers because that homework is hard. Okay, it is so I can't, it's difficult. I, there, there's not one. I, my, I got a 15 year old, eight year old, and a five year old. I can't do none of their homework. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when they ask me, you know, especially what I say? the math. Go I don't ask your mother. Go ask your mother. Go ask your mother. Ask your mom. Is that what you said? Yeah, go ask your mother. I don't know. I don't understand yeah. none of the math. Maybe I need to sue.
<laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I need to get for back pay. Man, Jesus, they just push me through because I don't understand nothing they be talking about. No, that's real talk though. It's a real thing, guys. Mm-hmm. Like people really got behind, and, and to your point, DJ, we had to pay for tutoring. Yeah. I had to do all of, it. and it was really expensive. Everybody can't afford. That's right. You know, tutoring. So it's a big, big deal. So uh, hopefully they'll they'll pass it along to other states, and other states can benefit. All right. Well, that is front page news. What are we talking next hour, Tess? Yeah, speaking of the internet, uh, like we just talked about with homeschooling, if you have the internet and you've been receiving that discount uh, to uh, save you on the internet, that is about to expire. So that's really, really important. And if you eat anything from Quaker Oats brand, uh, throw it out. I'm going to tell you why. We'll talk about it at the 7 o'clock hour. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Call us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your time to get it off your chest. Wake, wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed, it's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800 585 1051. We want to hear from you on the Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? <laughs> hey, good morning, guys. This is Devontae. Hey, Devontae. Good morning. Good morning. Devontae. Good morning, Envy. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Charlemagne. How are y'all doing today? Good. Peace. Peace. And Justin Larry, I want to congratulate you on the job. I wish you nothing but success, Thank and you. I wish you much success, success in the future. Thank you, honey. Oh, and I got a question for Justin, DJ, and Andy. Yes, sir. You guys took acting, um, acting classes, right? I did. I did not. Yo, you did? Oh, because the thing is, that's something I want to get into in the future. I'm okay. 30, I'm about to be 32 this month, and I feel like my life is going nowhere. I mean, I'm an assistant manager, but I want my life to go better and higher. Okay. Uh, I mean, you, you, I mean, there's a lot of acting classes online. If you can afford it, some of these uh, colleges actually have it. My wife went to uh, acting class at uh, I can't remember the school in the city, but they had. And I went to uh, Tracy Moore Marable. She was a, a she. St- I think she still does it. She's a, she's a black woman out of, out of New York. She she did Buster Rhymes. She did me. Uh, she did a, a, a host of people. She did Yandy. She did a couple of people back in the day. And you know, just it's just you know doing reps and teaching us the art of acting. So it was pretty cool. You actually don't always need um, acting classes. I would say, is that something that you always been interested in? Yeah, I've been like I've been thinking about it since um, 2013, but I'm just I'm just honestly I'm just I'm just scared to feel that that I might fail. No, 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 no! Don't ever think that. So what you can do is you can get some monologues and you can practice until you're able to even afford, if mm-hmm. you can, you know, uh, acting classes because they do get expensive. They are some, there are some that are affordable, but just start practicing monologues and then re- put yourself on camera, put yourself on tape, and then put yourself out there, you know, like to see to get feedback because that's that's honestly what people do on YouTube and stuff like that, and that's how a lot of people they get discovered just like that. Right. All right. Well, I live in Massachusetts, so I might. How, how much are the, the classes in your um, Envy? Bro, I went to classes 15 years ago, 17 years ago. So I'm sure what the I, they were like fifty dollars a class back then. So I don't know what oh, they no. are now. They oh, they no, were not not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> I mean, it was a long time ago. Yeah. But you know, they also have free classes. You just gotta Google and check. There's there's all type yeah. of work workshops that you can do, and and uh they they have that thing that's like a um I'm trying to think what it is where you could actually go to comedy shows and you could be a part of it. I, I, it is but you just gotta do your Googles bro yeah yeah and put yourself right. out there more improv improv shows they have yeah. improv shows where you can actually be a part of it and do it weekly that are, that are usually not expensive or free yeah alright thank you guys no uh, problem have a I good like one. how fake professional y'all got when he called like y'all turned on y'all trying to get an apartment voice you know what it's I mean it's literally you mad cause you didn't take acting or anything cause he didn't say anything to you oh no I'm ex- I, I like the executive producer I'm not really the and every time, I, every time they put me on stuff, I'm playing myself. But y'all really did turn y'all voices changed completely. <laughs> but we because we really did because you can't play nobody else. But that's we, why we, I really did it. Like I, that, I thought that's where I was gonna go before I when I, when I was DJing. I was like, I'm gonna be an actor. Yeah, I was gonna say you did. Ain't nobody ever thought. That. I, I swear to God, I, I'm in a couple of movies. I did. I just did East New York last year. The, the oh movie. Yeah. You ain't <laughs> never thought you was gonna be no. Actor. I swear, I did. <laughs> I swear. I ain't know. I swear, okay. I, did, I, I did. But just that's, what's the movie you played a real estate agent? I didn't do that movie. Oh. Hey, look, Charlemagne. I did Blood of a Champion did. with Bokeem with Bond. I did Blood East. of a Champion. Oh, my God, you was in a movie with Bokeem. Yeah, Bokeem. <laughs> oh, my God. I put a yeah. knife to his neck, was going to kill him. I, I love Bokeem. Yeah, yeah, I did, I did a bunch of movies, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's an asshole. When's the one you play? Yeah, he can't agent. act at all. That's why he couldn't act with TMZ called him outside. I said, what's up with Jesse? He said, huh? That was great. Huh? Huh? That huh killed it. This movie called Body. 
I was a producer on that one though with Eminem. They played no tall guy. <laughs> what you mean? Uh, I was tall in there. The way the camera used to scroll, it used to oh, make okay. me look tall. I had to be taller than the battle rappers. That's a goddamn lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> Get it off your chest. 800 585 1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? This is Vante. Hey, what's up, Vante? Get it off your chest. Uh, I really ain't got nothing to get on my chest. I'm little everything. How y'all doing this morning? Good, good. Good morning. Uh, I, I really didn't want to talk to you let her know I hang TV. I, I got pictures in her DMs and all that. He hangs TVs and he has pictures in your DMs. No, I don't like this one for you. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't like how this sounds. <laughs> uh, okay, Where you from? Thank you. I'm from Georgia. Well, you can't. Oh, okay. You can't hang TVs anyway. She's she's out here in New York, New Jersey. All right, that cool. I travel. <laughs> you gonna travel <laughs> from Georgia to New York to hang a TV? You don't sound yeah, like you gonna be hang. discreet, sir. Yeah, just to hang on that TV. I thought, yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. Nope. Nope. Thank nope. you. <laughs> she said, no, thank you. No, I did <laughs> no not thank, say, you. thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Because you got to think this is your abode. This is your residency. I understand. Yes, I, I'm thinking about that. Hello, who's this? Yo, DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God, and hold on. Pat, my girl, Jess in the building. Hi. Coach Davis, what's up? It's Coach Davis, what's good, y'all? How y'all doing, man? Doing good. good. Hey, listen, Jess, I'm, I don't know what took them so long, why they bumped their head, but thank God they came to their senses and gave you the contract and treat you like the queen you deserve to be. You feel me? Yes, thank you so much for saying that. What you mean it, it took so it long? Was, it didn't take no, long I, at all, I, crazy. It did take long. No, it did. It's, it's February. Hi, y'all went a whole month. You know what? <laughs> you're like, you're like a, you are definitely a friend in my head, but I would say this. You know, as an educator, um, when y'all was talking about uh, with with Tez about the lawsuit in California, yeah, I'm glad that happened, and I hope it does take uh, take hold in the other 49 states here and, uh, and 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 make some real changes for these students because it's needed. Listen, I understand. I took during COVID, and Lord have mercy, that was one crazy error. That was, that was a crazy era in it education, really you know, in all my 25 years. But I would say this, you know, as a, a teacher at Linden Middle School for a teacher first charter school, we're making strides, man. We, we're, we're getting back to where we need to be. It's not pre COVID numbers, but, you know, we, we've made headway, especially with our eighth graders this year. You know, our whole uh, graduating class has passed the math region, and I'm so proud of them. You know, because they 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 suffered the most during COVID, man. You know, and and it was crazy. So I'm uh, congratulations to California. All right, yeah, he's I right, coach. He's right, though. Coach Davis is right. Humans move on too fast. Like we really act like COVID didn't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that wasn't just a few years ago, yeah. man. Like we just move on to the next thing like it's nothing. We act like an attempted coup in this country didn't happen. Right. We act like protests in the street during George Floyd didn't happen. Right. Like, how do we just move on? Now, like, like you said, we move on. It's weird. Fast, yeah. super duper fast. Like nobody even talks about COVID. And, and, and you know what? It's, it's crazy. We was in the house for no, a whole year. No, but yeah. think, about, think about this. You know that that there's a monumental picture of a, of a firefighter on 9-11. It's a picture that went everywhere, right? He just passed away yesterday at like 93 or 96 years old. And he died from cancer. But his wife was just saying that, you know, it's so crazy. He took this monumental picture and he probably died because of all the, the things that he went through with with. with 9-11 with you know with all the fumes and everything he mm -hmm. breathed in but we don't ever talk about that anymore wow. and that was so big and that was that the, was a long time ago but that was the biggest casualty in US history though, right no, I'm with you but that was yeah if, you, well, if we don't even remember what happened yesterday like that or, or, or a week ago 23 years yeah. that's a lifetime yeah literally we've been very desensitized that's right from a lot of things Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. Now, Jess, we got the uh, Jess with the mess coming up? Yes, we do. Sexy Red had that baby. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we'll get talk about it when we come back. It's sure. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's yes, get to indeed. the rumors. Or let's get to Jess with the mess. Jess. 
Write it down. It's Jess with the mess and her news is real. It's not the rumor report. Thank Write it you. down, Envy. Take him. This must be his first day, too. This second day. That's your second day. <laughs> I, I know. I got relaxed. All right. <laughs> Sexy Red had that baby and she is ready to be back outside. Yesterday, Sexy Red revealed that she had a baby. Uh, she posted a picture of herself in the hospital bed with sunglasses on like the New York meme. I think it's so cute. Uh, <laughs> the, well, the, the New York meme. Oh, hilarious. That's what that was. You yeah. Because right. <laughs> that's exactly what my mind went to when I saw it she blew up at the end of her pregnancy cause remember she was when she was she up was here she was smaller than that mm -hmm. but that's just how that's the effect that some of the babies be having on you depends on you know where you you know like your age and all of that type of stuff um, her caption was me waiting to get discharged from the hospital so I can hit the block with the guys she can't wait she also posted two other pictures um, one where she is grabbing her crotch and, is that um, still in the hospital bed? Yeah, that's in the hospital bed, yeah. They, well, don't yeah. you got to wait for more discharge to come out before you get discharged? Yeah, usually. Yeah. Hey, yo. <laughs> I like that. That was, that was, that was cute. Um, but yeah, then she took one of my legs, cocked open with the, I don't know what sign it says, I guess, whatever. But <laughs> this is what <laughs> I be talking about. And then remember she got up here and she got mad at me mm -hmm. for saying, <laughs> just for saying anything. Like, but this is what I'm talking about. Sexy. It don't hurt still. It don't hurt still. Jesus. But look, she didn't share the name, the gender, or the actual date that she had the baby. However, she is ready to go back outside. Well, congratulations to Sexy Red. I am glad she had a healthy delivery. Me too. You Me know, too. in this world where the uh, black maternal death rate is so high, I, I'm happy whenever a, a black woman, or any woman, but especially black women, have babies and it's a healthy pregnancy. So salute to her. And I also wanted to... Um, um, Say, I thought it was funny how she got her hair done in the hospital too. She was like, "Oh no!" She had her stylist come to the hospital to do her hair. And she knows she about to have that photo to shoot. Look it up, yeah, like, to look it up. That was funny. But and uh, her skin was so beautiful her whole pregnancy. Though I ain't gonna lie, I did, I, did, I love seeing that that beautiful glow that she had. Um, moving on, Lotto drops cover art for Sunday Service. Lotto announced her single Sunday Service is dropping on Friday. She also shared the cover art that features a collage of other female rappers and. And their eyes are censored out. Why? Ice Spice, I know, right? Now, it's a, it's a couple of speculations that we can get from this. Mm -hmm. um, as Ice Spice and Coyle Ray are seen in the collage, and we know like she had some like recent beefs with them. with them. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other women in the collage that weren't that people weren't aware of Lotto having any issue with, like Missy Elliott, Lil' Kim, mm -hmm. and Sexy Red, and several others. But and I, I of course I go through the comments or whatever, and I seen that people were saying like Oh, Shane have Nikki in there like she was scared to have Nikki in there. Nikki behind that elbow. I don't think y'all know that. Nikki that, behind that, that elbow. That Roman Revenge wig, that uh -huh, that blonde curly that is uh, her. oodles and noodles pack wig. That's absolutely yeah. her. You mm -hmm. already know you said this mm -hmm. shit is behind the elbow. And um she she got that. But I think she's she's gonna reveal the whole cover art. I just think this is a good this is a good plot for promo. Like so was it to a dish record? To it. it 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 may be. Um but we have a snippet of it. Let's hear it. Number three. Okay, so Lotto I don't can rap though. Yeah, yeah, she they, can, rap. yeah, she can. can rap. We cannot deny that this girl be rapping circles, man. She be rapping circles around certain people. Now, Ice Spice recently revealed that her song "Fart" is a diss to Lotto, and she's. <laughs> <laughs> I know I wouldn't even take that, that as so a, stupid as a diss. <laughs> you ain't even a fart. Thank you, um, <laughs> thank you. I don't want to think, you know. Stupid. But uh, she saw herself on on a TV in the background of Lotto's uh, tease video for Sunday Service, and we have audio for that. Too. I'm before. in the back of your weak ass snippet. Like that's how right. I was the literally. Like so, I was like, wait a second, that's me. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> since we're talking about me, let's talk about me. And I dropped that. It was really just a snippet. And then you overshadowed the out of it. That's what the funny part. Of it was it. me like, trying to be delusional. Yeah. Like, nah, there's no way they really put her in the back of the video. That's so bold. Though. No, I was like, this has to be fake. This is AI. But. <laughs> Mm -hmm. be, you know what I'm saying? Be bold. So I was like, oh, we're being bold today. Now, you know, the rap girlies are very creative and very subliminal and stuff like that. Sometimes they can get like that. And, and they, you know, they it can, it can be little stuff that they put out there for us to figure out instead mm -hmm. of just putting it out in the forefront. A little Easter egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what if Lotto was just watching her video, though? What if that was just a coincidence? Why not take it as a compliment? I thought that, too. You know, when you when you sometimes you get in these sprinters, they mm -hmm. just have videos playing. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe she just did it. But then there's more to the story. Cause yeah, because the lyric that she said. What was the lyric? like, I just want a one-on-one. Was she scared or something like that? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. um, but after Ice Spice revealed that fart 
was <laughs> was about Lotto. Lotto pulled up to the Bronx with 20 black Suburbans to shoot a scene for the full Sunday service video. So we shall see. I get it. You call me a fart. I got to bar you up, man. <laughs> and Lotto, you got to come with it. Because if I, if I Spice get you out of here by just calling you a fart, you might have to retire. Well, see, <laughs> and see one, of the, one, one of the bars is I, I pull up on you 20 Suburbans like a Sunday service. Yeah. And that's what she did. She pulled up in the Bronx with 20 Suburbans mm -hmm. and wrapped on, uh, on uh, Ice Spice's block. Yeah, yeah. And the comments be so funny. They was in there like that's that's not a flex. You had to come with twenty suburbans. What 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 was she just pull up in a Honda? <laughs> like what is going on? Like she is Lotto. She's a rapper. And like, the Bronx is still the Bronx. It's still the Bronx. But Ice Spice not hood. You know? No, not like, at all. Like, I don't. I don't know, man. What yeah. a God bless. I hope y'all have fun. I know. Yeah, she went to uh, State University of New York at Purchase, where she played uh, volleyball, and she was the back row in the volleyball team. Mm. But you got to come with it though, because somebody call you a fart. Like, somebody call you a <laughs> fart, you got to bar them up. Like, you can't let them win by just saying you a fart. I would never be offended if somebody called me a fart. It's the, yeah. Yeah. I guess. I just, I can't. That's it's true, like, not what you said. It's true. Yeah, but she said, you not even a fart. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's, she right. said she, right. that's why I was like, oh my God, thank you. You're right. You're I would right. be like, yes, she, she said, don't think I stink. She said, you not even a fart? I thought she said, yeah, you she all said, fart. No? You no, know, she said, you think you the S? So you're not minute, even a fart. fart. So is Lotto trying to prove she the fart? So Lotto might be trying to prove she the fart and the. Yeah. I'm all uh, that. Uh, I'm all that. Uh, that got to be one of the bars in the song in Sunday yeah. service. I'm the fart and the... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna wipe my ass with you. Period. Yes. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> right in the yes. hood. Yeah. Yes. I like that. I like that. That's just got a ball, Lotto. All right. Thank you, Jess. When we come back, we got front page news. Tez will be joining us, and then Kenya Moore will be here. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club, and let's get in some front page news. What up, Tez? What's going on, DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy? Hey, girl. Now let's jump right into it. Where we starting? The internet? Uh, let's yeah, let's talk about the internet. Um, we talked about a little bit in the first hour how internet is really important, you know, for kids to learn at home, but it is something that we all need. Now, there's an act called the Affordable Connectivity Act. Now, this act offers discount internet service to people with low incomes. It is set to expire this spring. This is a really big deal to a lot of people. Uh, this allows people to stay connected. Just want to use a quick example. In North Carolina, 900,000 people will lose their internet access if they have if they lose this program, or they would have to pay to stay connected. North Carolina is one of the top states in the country when it comes to taking advantage of the program with more than 50% of eligible households in the state that are enrolled in the program. You may remember a lot of the folks, the Democrats, talking about this on the campaign trail. We're going to make sure people have access to internet. Make sure people have access to internet. So this is a really, really big program. Take a listen to Democrat Senator Peter Welch from Vermont explain why he's trying to keep this program funded. Congress worked together on a bipartisan basis to pass the Affordable Connectivity Program. That law provides discounts on internet bills for households that qualify. More than 22 million households are already saving money on their internet through this program, but the funding is running out. That's why I have introduced the Bipartisan Affordable Connectivity Program Extension Act to fund this absolutely essential program so we can maintain and expand high-speed internet to households across our country. Mm. So um, again, you might remember uh, Charlemagne when Cedric Richmond when he came up to the Breakfast Club and they talked about internet, internet, internet. You know, making sure people have it, making sure people have it in, in rural communities. It was really a big talking point, especially as they talked to Black voters. So uh, it would be wise, you know, if they figure out, um, you know, how to make this make this program continue because it really does affect people in, in a real way. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I don't know if everybody deserves any of that though. I have to see who some of these people are. Okay, they should. They should are have you never. Serious? They should have never gave some of you Negroes the Wi-Fi. Nah, I, right? I mean, I, I don't know if the internet should be a right because a lot of y'all be abusing it. For those of y'all who be abusing it and just be hating on people, they should have to pay more. Well, Let me see how bad you really want to hate. Well, it's more for students, right? Because students need the yeah. internet for schooling and classes. I'm right? with them. Right. I'm fine with them, but let's 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 go let's go through the list. The let's go through the list. <laughs> <laughs> you in a school, you case by case basis. Jesus don't just be Christ. giving Wi-Fi to everybody. Yeah. We do need to have some type of uh, more responsibility with who gets on um, the internet, man. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, more responsibility act. That's right. And if we <laughs> find out that you abused it, like I said, you got to pay more than everybody else. Yeah. Let me see how bad you really want to hate on me. Let me see how bad you really want to hate on Justin Larris. Let me see how bad you really want to hate on him. Okay? That's what you like. That's what you paying for? Yeah. Yeah. But that's a unique, that's a different uh, spin for it sure. sure. Well, the average, 
<laughs> the average price for internet is seventy nine dollars. So Damn. internet expensive. Wow. Yeah. And that's very expensive. Now, this program is set. Uh, actually, they're going to stop taking applications on it tomorrow, February 7th. So uh, if you, I guess, if you want to try to get in at the last minute, you can. But uh, it will expire in April if Congress does not push this. And again, big talking point uh, during the Democrat um election you know when they were talking about what they were going to do so we'll see if this is something that inspired Charlie, we kind of talked about a little bit off air how you know republicans are they're not passing a lot of stuff because they want to use it as a win so this mm -hmm. is one of those things that i'm wondering will they stop and not do because now you know uh, republicans control the house so this is you know how how you can stop things to be able to say hey we're going to make sure we do this on our watch so i'm, I'm gonna be looking at it from that standpoint to see you know how they're gonna move on this and allow this program to continue my answer to that would be no especially in a uh, in, in election year i don't think the republicans are going to move on anything because they're going to try to get you know trump back into the white house and then when trump gets into the white house he's going to look like god because they're going to be passing everything Mm-hmm. Even though this stuff is on the table right mm -hmm. now. So kind of like what's happening with the border. So all right, right well I was gonna say let's jump right into Quaker Oats. Yeah, I want to tell you about this because I'm sure I know I eat Quaker oats, uh oatmeal, a lot of folks eat granola bars yes. for kids. Yeah, that's a big, big thing. I wonder why I never see this stuff on the news as much. That's yeah. always concerning to me. Um, but it is possible uh salmonella uh contamination, uh, and so an over one hundred products. So I don't even need to list out all the products. So any Quaker Oats product that you have, uh it is a possible uh, contamination. Take a listen quickly. Quaker Oats expanding its recall over concerns of possible salmonella salmonella contamination adding chewy dips llama rama products with the best before date of february 10th or 11th now more than 100 products recalled including various granola bars snack mixes and some cereals that's scary yeah very yeah. much so very scary why do you think we don't see this in the news as much though I, I i try to do these recall stories guys because i think it's important to know that you could die if you're eating a very popular product yeah i also think it's important to know if you're driving a car and the airbag no longer works yep but i just think it's interesting that we don't see you know you'll see it i, I literally have to go find these like these stories and you'll see it on local some local stations but i don't really see it you know a lot like I, I wish blogs would take a moment to kind of put this stuff out here i know it's important to you know talk about gossip and who's sleeping with who and all that type of stuff but mm -hmm. i just think this is really really important because it's just not enough awareness uh you on, know, on our food that's mm -hmm. interesting you say that Ted, because i mean you know i think those those blog sites like this not really their lane like you know if you go yeah you know like the abc news of the world the usa today's you know you'll you'll you definitely see this stuff about the the recall i saw this a few days ago, actually, but I, you know, I, if you're looking, if you're going to the shade room for this, you ain't gonna see it on shade room. Sure, you know? but do you think they could just every now and then, maybe once a month, just put, you know, maybe not on the shade room, but just can, can we utilize the blog just no. maybe once a month on something that help people? Or that's asking too much. I, I think that as, as far as like a recall, that might be asking a bit too much. Like, I don't I, think that's I, a bit. So I, there's so many I recalls. Would, yeah. I say, well, uh, I do see. Shout out to Jason Lee, Hollywood Unlock. He covers a lot of stories about things like this. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, Shea Room is not the only blog. Um, but I mean, you know, not the only urban blog that. But he covers a little bit of everything. He touches everything mm -hmm. uh, from politics to recalls mm -hmm. to who's sleeping with who, who ain't sleeping, ain't ain't doing enough or whatever. So um, I do see it in some, on some of the blogs. But I don't see that where it would hurt to actually shed light on some of these things for any blog. Yeah, because I mean, I, I, to your point, and I agree with you, uh, Jess, to your point, Charlamagne, I know it's not their lane, but if you got mass amount of people watching, you know, I just, you know, like with the Tesla story, literally they told every Tesla to, to you know, turn their car in because you could, you know, it could literally, you could die. So I don't know. Yeah. Just something I just think about. I just think maybe every now and then, you know, it wouldn't hurt to. Yeah, I guess I just don't want people to think that's where you got to go to get your sure, news. Like, absolutely. you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to sure. you gotta broaden your palate when it comes to the information you consume. Sure. Like, I know what Shade Room going to give me, but I also know what ABC News and USA Today and all of that stuff going to give me, too. I would say that most of us don't go to those places majority yeah. of the time. Like, when the last time you opened up a newspaper and just read it? <laughs> that's <laughs> true. I read the paper every that's morning. True. A lot of people don't do that, you know? That's all true. Right. I guess I'm trying to meet people where they are, too, you know, because they may not ever watch it. But you you make a point with that, too. But throw away the Quaker Oats, guys. That's the bottom line of the more to the story. All right. Well, that is front page news. Thank you, Tez.
You're welcome. And make sure you follow at Tedlin Figaro on all social media <laughs> platforms. And subscribe to Tedlin Figaro's podcast. It's Great Shot No Chaser podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. All right. Now, when we come back, Kenya Moore will be joining us. Of course, you know her from Housewives. And she's in the new uh, Lifetime movie. It's called Abducted Off the Street, the Carlisha Gather story. And we'll talk to her next. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. We have Kenya Moore. Welcome, Ms. Kenya yes, Moore. Thank you. Yeah. How you feeling this morning? I feel good. Well, you're here for uh, the Carlisha Gather story. Yes. Mm. Now, yes. for people that don't know, uh, break down who she is. So it's the Carlisha Gather story. Um, abducted off the street. It's a lifetime movie. It's going to be premiering on Saturday. We're so excited. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a young lady. It was like all in the news she's from philadelphia she was a nurse's assistant she was 22 and she was walking home after a family gathering and there was this crazy guy psycho killer um rapist who basically snatched her you know you tell your kids you know you better be careful because somebody can snatch mm -hmm. your ass and that's exactly what happened um he forced her into the car but she was smart enough that she started leaving little clues like making him go to the ATM machine and use her her ATM card wow. to wow. you know so of course there's a trail on that mm -hmm. um she dropped certain things that they would get out of the store like her her cut her handcuffs and mm -hmm. things like that so she was just like really really cognizant of I need you guys to find me and this is how you can so she was just leaving clues um and she ended up getting rescued within wow. seven 72 hours. Wow, that's mm -hmm. an amazing yeah. story. It's like the hood Hansel and Gretel or something. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was intense. So I play her mom. I know, yes, yes, I know I look too young to play this girl's mom. Because we was definitely going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the mom's name is Keisha. Yeah, her, her name is Keisha. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was just really determined, really determined to find her child. Mm -hmm. And the one thing about this story is, you know, when we come up missing, black women, black girls, the news coverage is not not there. It's mm -hmm. just like such a disparity in the way they cover us going missing and the way they cover other people going That's missing. So, White um, people. Yes, yeah. others. Mm -hmm. um, and so I love this for us. I love this for Lifetime because they've like taken on this initiative to highlight all of these black girls missing stories mm -hmm. and like a series that Lifetime is doing. Yeah. But yeah, but her um, back to, you know, the role that I play is a really serious role for me is when I'm like, I haven't been a lead in a movie in a long time. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just excited. You know, she's tough. She's brave. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, you know, in a way, very controlled. She's a thinker. Um, she's not like emotional. Like, oh, what happened to my baby? Um, yeah. You know, falling. I didn't want to play her like that. I wanted to play her controlled and like methodic. And Did you talk to the mom? Her child. Yeah. Did you get a chance to talk to the mom and, and see no, what her mental was? No, no, no. They've been active. Like, you know, the story is pretty fresh. Mm -hmm. So she, she didn't come to the set. She's, mm -hmm. but she's been talking to producers and writers, mm -hmm. Carlisha. But it's really, a, you know, it's still really kind of yeah. fresh. So I don't know if you'll ever like really talk to her or see her anytime soon. Did you get to meet Carlisha? How involved was no. she? No. No, yeah. not not either. No, not even Carlisha's her. the one who's been like giving her, you know, her right. accounting of what happened. But uh, yeah, she hasn't been seen. She may mm -hmm. show up, but I'm not sure. But yeah. I just respect the fact that through all the pain, and I mean the ordeal, the the man almost killed her and he raped her mm -hmm. um, wow. uh, multiple times. So she survived, and she was determined. Mm -hmm. Like her sole focus was. I need to get home to my family. Did you take this role after, I can't remember the lady's name, but after the girl who was on the side of the road said she seen a white baby walking down. You know, I, that you, was, I shot, shot it, it, yeah. Did I you take shot it before, it before that? Oh, really? I shot okay. it before, but okay. imagine, like they're kind of parallel, but obviously one was lying, but the fact right. that she was trying to capitalize off of like someone kidnapping her abducting her so that was like and then to see a real story yes. you know like this yes play out like that that has to be that just make you feel bad exactly yeah. like girl this stuff is really happening girls yeah. are not coming home and you over here playing with yeah. us playing yeah. in our faces so that was so good. as a mother how did you relate to the role like how did was it very sensitive for you some parts yeah. because you you are a mom yeah um it was tough because in my mind, I, I put the script down when I read it. The mm. first time I, I think I read 10 pages and then I was like, oh, I can't do this. I was like, yeah, no, this one is not for me because it did like hit hit close to home. Um, I think 
a mother's biggest fear, especially a mother of a of a of a daughter, a girl, you want to protect them at all costs. Absolutely. And your biggest fear is something will happen to them. Yeah. Um. And so when I read the first scenes of her being snatched, her being you know raped all that stuff i was like oh i can't i can't do this and then i thought about okay let me why why did this script come to me because i think it's a higher it's 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 a deeper reason why projects come to you or work comes to you i think it's divine Mm -hmm. steps so i said let me let me look at this in a different way why should i do it awareness yeah awareness Mm -hmm. because honestly the way that the story is written in the movie unfolds it will save lives if you watch this movie you will get ahead of situations you will avoid situations you will know what to do in situations to basically survive and get back home Mm -hmm. you know so i said you know if i can help to save lives especially with girls and women who look like me that's that's all the reason i needed to like overcome my fear i wonder how triggering this is for the family like when they watch yeah. it and and for you know Carlisha like when she yeah. watches it like cause you kind of got to relive all of that you yeah know? you do um, I, I don't know um, you know we haven't had an opportunity to talk to her but I think she was just so brave to tell her story mm-hmm. but she has two kids you know I know that she's focusing on that and she um, had two kids before the situation or I, I know, I've seen photos okay. it's, it's actually a photo at the end of the movie and she's uh, the, the children are fairly young two little boys i think um so i'm not exactly sure but you know she's focusing on being a mom so can you imagine like being able to talk about i think she had them after Mm -hmm. i think yeah all right we got more with kenya more when we come back so don't move it's the breakfast club good morning morning everybody it's dj nv jess hilarious charlamagne the guy we're still kicking it with kenya more well i want to i want to ask i know you're a housewives og see now we gonna get into it i had to ask i had to ask we talked about the movie why you here and lifetime february 10th 8 7 central we got we got we got the work done okay what is it candy recently says she's not doing housewives anymore what's your thoughts after 14 years i heard you behind the scenes saying how happy you were that she's not coming back now you know charlamagne <laughs> How happy she was that behind the <laughs> like mumbling. <laughs> Mumblings and rumblings, you know. No, um, so I knew she had told me before um that she had made the decision. And um sometimes you know you need you may need a break. You know, she's doing a lot of things. That girl is a mini mogul, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's doing she's got her hands in some of everything and she's very successful. And honestly, money just matriculates around candy, you know, for years, for years, like (laughs) candy, she's got the Midas touch, whatever she touches Mm -hmm. turns to gold. So she is going to be obviously all right financially. I think she might just be like, you know, I want to explore some other things. I think it's because they did take so long to try to figure out who's coming back. What are they doing with the cast? So. I'm happy for her you know I think she's chasing her dreams she's happy her relationship is great her family is good Um, I remember they announced they were getting rid of everybody at one point didn't they there were rumors. They didn't announce. There were rumors. Dang, yeah, yeah, everybody. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. They were trying to do like they were saying that they possibly could do a recast like New York did. Yeah, but I'm like, nah. You can't get it. Get rid of everyone. It's too many. Like you mm-hmm. know, we're the, we're the OGs of the na- and... network. You know what I mean? Yeah. We we were the crown jewel of Bravo above all the other shows. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, we can get back to that. You people think the show lost its luster? Yeah, I was gonna oh. say people saying the ratings were low. See, that's that is. A complete lie. The ratings mm-hmm. never drop. We are actually doing. We are in the top five of all of the shows on Bravo. So how are our ratings doing poorly? Yeah. That's just again things people say mm-hmm. because of their perception of what they're the you know what they're looking at mm-hmm. um, in terms of oh well, I don't like this season and which you know people always complain about seasons and then they'll start saying yeah that's why the ratings are low but they're comparing they have to look at the ratings for the network and how Mm -hmm. people are watching TV now. So before they would always release live ratings but the ratings count their plus 10 numbers. So they're plus threes, they're plus sevens, they're plus tens. That's what they look at. And even our live ratings are again on par with the top five on the entire network. So what are you? What, that, mm. It's just rumors. People, I believe that it, it, uh, they, they like to be in the comments, and that that that, yeah. that is yes. the, the comments. Yes. I'm opinionated. Yes. Um, yes. But I want to ask you. Uh, it it took you 
three years to finalize your divorce. Well, yes. congratulations thank for you. you. Thank you. Yes, thank that's why you. we got the balloons for you. Ice free. Ice free. Ice free. Yes. 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 Just well, got you balloons. And actually, I did. You got me balloons. Uh, um, yes, yes, ma'am. You lying. Yes. Yes. This, is my this is your, this this is your yeah. finalization. Yes. I love it. I love <laughs> it. You. This Look, is amazing. Why did the judge still didn't sign off yet? Okay. So the paperwork is there. So I'm waiting every day. I'm checking online to see if he he um signed off. He didn't yet. Foolishness. Yeah. You know, I, I'm one I'm very sensible. Like I know what y'all might think of me on TV or whatever. I'm on a show. But I am very reasonable. If you sit down and you talk to me and you make sense, okay. I didn't think we should ever go to court. I think we didn't have any property together. We didn't build anything together. We had a child. We can agree on the child support because he was already paying a, a number already. Yeah. And that's what it should have been. And I don't think that all the money that we spent in court for him fighting me, he ended up with less than what he started with. And I'm out of three years of tuition for my child to go to school. Wait, so he Dang. wanted he wanted more. What what, what, what did he want? Because it seems it, like, like you said, you, you come in drama, where I came in. Then drama. That's yeah. what he wanted. Drama. He wanted drama. He he started off. The line just kept moving whenever. And at some point I was like, here you go. This is what you want. Here you go. And the line kept being moved on mm -hmm. what he wanted. Then mm -hmm. it was this. Then it was that. And then he had the nerve to want. Now, you remember how he was saying he didn't want to be on TV? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then so he at the end. He supposedly had some opportunity to be on TV and he wanted to film with my daughter. And I was like, but that's why I sued you to begin with, because you you wouldn't sign the release for Brooklyn to film with me, someone who's been on a show for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then you want to say, oh, well, if I go, I'm taking Brooklyn with me. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. Bro. That's the one thing I I stood on business with yeah. because I'm like that's the one thing you're mm. not going to take I take yeah. care of this child 24-7 and it is my right as the primary custodial parent to be able to allow her to, to do whatever I want her to do Right. and he tried to basically remove that right from me when it comes to him because he yeah. wanted to do his little TV show. Yeah, because that there was a statement that he tried to undo your rights. As he a did. Mom. Yeah. Mm. When it comes to that, yeah. Mm. He had so a whole now, TV show? He supposedly, he told me that, yeah, that they were filming. He wanted Brooklyn to film or... It, it, he doesn't say a lot of details mm. <laughs> mm. on mm. purpose. So, but now I have sole custody. So. I was going to say, is he still doing that? Okay. Yeah, no, so the judge didn't... awarded me sole custody. It sounds like he didn't want to let you go. It was that he no, didn't yeah. want. He wanted his yeah. marriage. I know people see and say things a lot of crazy stuff on TV. At the end of the day, that man will not sign those papers because if you want somebody to leave, that's right. And y'all don't have anything together. Why are you sitting here fighting? Yeah. I'm not arguing with you about child support. What else is there? Yeah. You know? Why can't he just be honest about that? Why can't he just come to you and say, "Kenya, I want to work." He this did. Out. He did. Oh, okay. He did before, and um, was and I it. was just like, at some mm -hmm. point, I was like, I, "It's too toxic." Um, they're not doing the work. You know, he wasn't doing the work. To me, he needed to, to, he, he needed to go to therapy. Mm -hmm. And then we needed to go together. I always go to therapy. You know, I think that it's a great thing. I think me so too. many years, it's been like this dark stigma of, you know, black people think, you know, oh, therapy, mm -hmm. what are you, crazy? You know, saying things like that. But it is so beneficial to, to just learning about yourself, Absolutely. how you interact with people. It's just necessary. So I was just like, well, you keep saying you want the marriage, but you're not doing the work. And then at some point I was just like, yeah, I, I'm right. OK. Yeah, yeah, I'm OK. What if he started doing the work now? Oh, well, apparently he has a fiance now, so I don't know. Oh, hey, hey. Hey. Jesus. What? That was fast. She's black or white. <laughs> so is she black or white? white? Is she black or white? She's, <laughs> she's not uh, black. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> wow. Yeah. James so. Kenya Moore. So. Jesus. Yeah. So I want to ask how you feel about that come, though. Come through with the Breakfast Club exclusive. <laughs> how do you feel about him and his wife fiance? She didn't say white. No, man. she didn't say white. Because that was a black and white. It's Asian, it's Spanish. Black. There's so many okay. other. There's so many other. Right, racist. I don't really care what she is. Good, good luck to her. That's what yeah. You know, wow. good luck to her. And at some point, that's all you can do is yeah, wish the next I, woman I luck. I wish you well. Mm -hmm. It's not my problem anymore. Please, judge, hurry up and sign my papers, <laughs> and then that's it. You know, I I just feel a relief. Like I, this is like the new era of me. I'm gonna do any and everything that I want to do. Yeah. I feel like when you have someone taking up that 
space in your life, you can't have anybody else come fill it because there's no space there. They're mm-hmm. always in the back of your mind, you know, doing all kind of things to try to bring you down, hurt you, prevent you from thriving. And I feel like, you know what? You, you're you not going to hold me down anymore. Yeah. So real. this is new era of me, yeah, you know? Right. So I'm I'm actually happy. It feels good. When I heard that's that, I just good. laughed. I was like, oh, girl. That's good. Oh, not girl, but you know, but yeah, girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So co-parenting okay, is not girl. an issue. With, <laughs> co-parenting is not an issue with him at all now. Well, he doesn't see her to co-parent, so oh, he don't even see her. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the last time was like last year, March. Damn. Yeah. Are so. you keeping? Are, is, is that because of you, or because he's just not making the effort? He's not making the effort. Is you know he's not making the effort. She's here now. And he's from New York, and you are in New York. Yeah, he lives across the bridge, and she's here, and he's too busy to see her. Damn. Yeah. Damn. All right, well, don't move. We got more with Kenya Moore when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. That's right. We are the Breakfast Club. DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We're still kicking it with Kenya Moore. She has a new flick on Lifetime. It's called Abducted Off the Street, the Carlisha Gather story. Kenya Moore's here. Charlemagne? Yeah. How are you enjoying being single? Uh, I don't know yet. It's uh, it's different, you know. Especially I, these days. Yeah, it's different. It's it's different. But you know, thanks to Usher, oh. uh, it's been a lot of activity in the DM. You know, <laughs> you know. Oh, when, when he when when he serenaded you at the <laughs> yeah, that concert? was fun. That was fun. Oh, so you mean like people saw the video and it was like, damn, can yeah, you still got right. it? Like you forgot about this, uh-huh. but yeah, <laughs> you forgot about this. <laughs> See, that's OG talk. There, you forgot yeah. about this. Forgot about this one. Forgot about this. Dude. <laughs> you know, yeah. So it's, it was fun. Like it's it's interesting. So you dating? I'm, yeah, I'm dating. I'm dating. So what does somebody take Kenya that that you that you love? I mean, because I remember that list came out. They can't take you to Olive Garden. What's wrong with Olive Garden? Well, listen, uh, listen. No, oh, you mean like a Kenya. cheesecake? You yes, mean? Cheesecake. <laughs> oh, um, because she was looking like I like. I Olive go Garden. to cheesecake <laughs> factory probably twice a week, especially yeah. like with my daughter. I mean, I don't yeah. care about stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I like yeah. somebody that I can have fun with. That is a good person. That's a good partner who can make you laugh. Mm-hmm. They don't have to match me dollar for dollar. You know, they just have to. I don't want to take care of anybody. But you right, know what I mean? Be right. gainfully employed, but mm-hmm. you don't have to be a mega millionaire, mm-hmm. you know, and with your own yacht and private plane and all that, but just be a good person. Yeah. Yeah. So no, we can eventually build and get there yeah, together. Yeah, we can get there together. You, know you have I mean? to have but the potential you, right. but in, and the desire. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be ambitious, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you get smart. remarried? Yes, yes absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love that because you hear how you you know some marriages, uh, you know, it doesn't work for women, and then they just be like, "I'm not doing this anymore." Yeah, and Cynthia I'm was up like on that. Yeah. And, yeah, and then here oh, she is. Yeah. She got married two uh-huh. years or three years later. So you know? Like you, you just can't let one. No, one you can't break my mind. soul. Yeah, Mm-mm. I know that's right. Mm-mm. You can't break my soul. How has business been going with the hair spa? Girl, so good, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um. It's it's amazing. Like it's learning a whole new business, you know, brick and mortar. Um, my hair care line is doing well. We're in like over five thousand doors. Kenya more hair care, you yes. know. It's Expanding in a in a, in um in the spring to two more major retailers. Congratulations. So I'm just it's it's growing, you know yeah. what I mean? It's I'm doing well and in you business. You had a special clients, your daughter. Yes, yeah. yes. How yes. is that to see she her? She asked. And oh, she did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I never straightened her hair, you know. Yeah. 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 So I, I don't believe in, like, I just, little girls should just be little girls yeah. to me. Yeah, if, unless it's a special occasion. Like, my grandmother did, you know, straighten my hair if it was like a birthday or like a wedding or something, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like every day. What yeah. do you sell, like, edge, edge, uh, edge protection stuff? I sell everything, like shampoo, conditioners, like, you know, stuff like that. Oh, okay, okay. Tangless, all that. Now, I saw you recently, too, say that uh, Nene Leak's future with Real Housewives of Atlanta is dead. Well, the way you just that, said it. Yeah, <laughs> yo. He oh, is so messy. So like, what? What? <laughs> what she, Jesus. He's it's messy over there. messy one. You said, you said she doesn't have a future. I didn't say no, she doesn't have a future. With Real Housewives of Atlanta. I Listen, what I said was this, what Andy said, which is our boss. Mm-hmm. He decides yes or no. Recently, when we did BravoCon, so the question always comes up because people love Nene. You know, they yeah. love her. And I love her, too. Like, I love her for the show. Absolutely. Been very, very um, clear about that and um, honest about that. He said, Nene told me to keep her name out of my mouth, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Jesus. That is what he said, verbatim. Mm-hmm. I didn't yeah. make that up. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's not my fight. I don't have a, a dog in that fight. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so that was just the answer to the question. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Maybe things could change. But, you know, she sued her employer. She was saying a lot of really nasty things about each and every one of, you know, the parties. I just don't know how you can come Make back up. from that. But, hey, I'm a forgiving person. So maybe there are people at the network and others that could forgive mm-hmm. and and there may be a future. I don't know what those cards say. Yeah. I was just going by mm-hmm. what our boss said. But you do think she'd be good? If she oh, so I've always said that. Yeah. I mean, I've never mm-hmm. said she mm-hmm. wouldn't be. She, I mean, listen, she was, she was the breakout star of that show, and she has left a legacy behind. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, she's she's a mess. You know, you know, Nene's a mess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> she, she was online talking about her. Yeah. Uh, her man and he wasn't good in bed and mm-hmm. he's this and that like you know yeah. I'm like girl why you have to this business how old are you talking about this man like this but uh, and, yet, and yet these are the things that people want to see is those you know yes, those they, like messy. That's right. they like people that don't have it together mm-hmm. nobody is perfect so yeah. if you can just take a peek at other people's lives and they're doing all kind of crazy stuff it's mm-hmm. fun to watch yeah. Not I mean, it's kind of fun to watch a, tra- a train wreck right that's right what do you right. think about compensation do you think that you know the black cast members get compensated like Beverly Hills, like Jersey, like yes. New York. Yeah, on our network, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nene was the highest paid. Well, Nene and then Candy took over that. But uh, at some point, yeah, the two t- highest paid women on the network were two black women. So, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. I do. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I can't speak for other networks. I don't really know the inner mm-hmm. workings. I, I can just tell you what I know. Do you still enjoy it? I enjoy it at times. You know, sometimes it's really fun. I didn't enjoy last season at all why not I, I just feel like it was dark it was people just there you know when people come in and they're so desperate to hold a peach yeah and they just do anything and lie and just cause commotion and it's not organic like when i came on i was a mess and i was a mess because i just was you know i wasn't trying to play this or play it. i wasn't trying to play the the reality star i became a reality star you know what i mean just being so because i was myself i didn't i didn't watch seasons ahead of time i didn't know what anybody was doing i was just Mm -hmm. reacting to all the stuff that was going on around me and then just bringing my own you know crazy life to the table Mm -hmm. these girls now they've had what 15 seasons to watch us and study us and they know and they're fans they're coming in as fans and they're coming in desperate to hold the peach and that's what makes it unfortunate because when you are desperate for something, you will do anything. Mm-hmm. And we saw that play out. And um and that that's to me what was unfortunate. Like Kim Zoziak is a natural mess, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Nene had her own issues. She was funny, but she also had her 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 issues that she brought. Candy has always been the poster child for being transparent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, with her mom situation and all the things that's going on. So, we just kind of need to go get back to what's real. What's real? Would you, you know? want to see that? The original, the OGs, Kim, you, Portia, Nene. Would you want to see that? You think people would want to see that, Cherie, all that? And just oh, to- yeah. People call for that all the time. I don't think it's a possibility. But if they could make that happen, yeah, that would be cool. They need to do an ultimate girls trip and have all the OGs there. I think that, yeah, that I think that I think, I think that, that would be, be hot, right? And that would be entertaining ins- yes. to say the least. Yes. yes. Bravo, you better run me my check for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, tell them when they can catch out the uh, check out the uh, lifetime Abducted show. Abducted off the street. That's right, February yes. 10th. Abducted off the street is coming out on Saturday at mm-hmm. 8 p.m. on Lifetime. Everybody, please support this movie. This is how we're going to bring our black girls who are missing, our black women who are missing home. And if something ever happens to your family you can figure out how to survive Mm -hmm. how to get out and how to see your family again all right well it's kenya moore ladies and gentlemen thanks for coming thank you (laughs) all right well dirt got a grammy too right he did i think it was a best melodic performance yeah best melodic performance yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. congratulations i mean jake and what i say god damn it i said said, drake yes dirk and jake just confused me man because she was saying jake earlier (laughs) by accident (laughs) <laughs> What's the Drake name? Drake and J. Cole. Drake and J. Cole. Yeah. Yeah, on tour. Drake and... Uh, huh? Yes, Drake, Drake and, and J. Cole, Cole on, on the, tour. Yes. Yeah. And they just added Dirk. They added Dirk. Yes. Well, who on this record? Dirk. Lil Dirk. J. Cole. And J. Cole. They got a yeah. Grammy. And, yes, and they got a Grammy. And Lil Kid's Quiet. And Lil Kid's Quiet. Yes. Absolutely. Good morning. We are The Breakfast Club. DJ Envy, Jess Larius, and Charlemagne the God. Mm-hmm. And let's get to Jess with the mess. Jess is real. 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 Jess is going to bring you numbers. Jess with the mess. I know this is real. On The Breakfast Club. I know they know the difference. Keep it a stack. 
Mace gifts Cameron $20,000. All right, so Cam turned 48 over the weekend. Okay, happy birthday, Cam. Mm -hmm. I know he was an Aquarius like myself. Um, on Monday's episode of It Is What It Is, Mace gifted him 20000 to make up for 20 years that they weren't friends. We have audio for it. But here go 20 racks. Oh, my, my <laughs> For the 20 years I ain't seen you. Thank you, brother. Yeah. All, all I'm going to do is, thank you so much, bro. All I'm going to do is buy you something. <laughs> I'm going to just take the 20 and buy you something. Man. Thank, thank oh, I you love so hearing that black yeah. boy joy. That yeah. is amazing. Respect to them. The, be the beauty of it, it is, like, they got 20, you know, 20 more years. I wish them more life, but, you know, they got yeah. 20 more years to live, but they're going to be on, like, some Ray and Claude from life stuff yeah. when they get older. So yeah. it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. And and I also didn't know that they were actually best friends back in high school. They, mm -hmm. they were best mm -hmm. friends and, um, and they're both from Harlem. They play basketball together. And yep. uh, they had a group as well, a Children of the Corn. Yep. Um, that, that involved uh, Big L, Cameron, Mace, Herb McGruff, Bloodshed, Herb McGruff. Mm -hmm. uh, Six Figure Digger, and mm -hmm. Duke the God. Mm -hmm. yep. That's and right. also, for those who don't know, they end up falling out because Mace was charging Cam $50,000 to do a video. But before... Uh, he had charged him that he had did a video, you know, off the strength, like just for free for uh, for Cam. And then it came time. We wanted him to do another one. And then he charged him 50,000. And the label gas came up, you know, asking, like, why is your friend charging you that much for your friend? But it's like, oh, that's how I make my money, too. So um, they ended up making up. But Mace moved to Atlanta and then became a pastor. Cam couldn't figure out how that happened, like many of us. And then uh, they worked out their issues and became friends again in 2022. So that's dope. I love that story. Yeah, they that's even dope. say Mace uh, introduced Cam to Biggie because, you know, Cam was signed to Biggie. So nice. they say that's how he got that deal. I tell you, I ran into... That, that is how that happened. Yeah, is that how about yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell you, I ran into uh, Mace on a plane a couple of weeks ago. He said mm -hmm. he wants to, to come up here. So come on up here, Pastor Mace. Nice. I know that's right. That is right. Shout out to Mace. I hope he's talking a little faster when he come up. i like, Mace, what? get it out. <laughs> he wouldn't be Mace if he did that. <laughs> well, I guess. I guess. I didn't realize how slow we talked until like the other day though what no, for real <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't know that that's his whole thing and I love Mace and I never realized he, well get him rap that slow so he I, actually I never does realized. Uh -uh. the Mace slow flow that was a thing okay I know yeah. that's I right. do what I do like I do it for like I do it for TV <laughs> he said hey, here go 20,000 <laughs> for 20 years I ain't seen you <laughs> <laughs> Deanna Taylor joins Leonardo DiCaprio for filming there's not many details surrounding this film um, but we see pictures and videos of Tiana filming a scene with Leonardo DiCaprio and they've been circulating over the weekend. They were dressed in business clothes and they walked into a high-rise building. They were filming in downtown Sacramento and the movie they were filming uh, for is reportedly a movie by filmmaker Paul Thomas Anderson. Details of the movie are being kept a secret, like I said, but uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was also seen filming with Regina Hall, so she may be another actress in the movie. That's very little details, but shout out to my baby, Tiana, because she's doing her Thing, I love you know? to see that with Tiana. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I do. She's so talented. So yeah. the fact that people are seeing it, I love yep. it. Dropping a clues box with Tiana Taylor. Absolutely. Getting her act on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she is one of uh, the many examples of just never give up. It don't right. Never give up. She also is starring in Dion Warwick's biopic. Well, I'm sorry, bio series. Um, a few weeks ago, Tiana also, she confirmed that um, on one of her many interviews that she's been doing. The trip is... Y'all spelled this wrong now. Don't be me giving see. me nothing like that. It what? said the trip is was officially funded and set into motion. I don't even know what this was. Huh? What this is. The trip. <laughs> is she going on a trip or that she in like the movie? That's like a Tyrese caption. Yeah. I, uh uh. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got audio of her talking about it. Uh, play number three. Do you know they're already said, Dionne Warwick has already said she wants you to play her yes. in her biopic. Yes. D um, yes. Would you want, I mean, is that a role you have your sight set on? Yeah, we already working on it. You're already working yeah. on it? Yes. Yeah. See, because I, I knew, because uh, so Dion was here on the show at the beginning of the year. She's like, all of these things are in motion. So it is yes. a thing. We're at the, the, the building process right now. Um, I've always wanted to make sure like I could lock in with any person that I would be playing, you know? Yeah. And I actually love that because Dion Woolwick actually mentioned that it would be a series doing her interview on Sherry, uh, Sherry Shepard's show. I don't, you always correct me. Is it Sherry or Sherry? Sherry. That's your, that's uh, our, that's your friend too. That's your OG. <laughs> Sherry. That's your OG. Like, that's like, your like, OG. She said that on her show talking about I called her OG. Uh, OG. A legend. I called her, her OG. Legend. I called her a legend. Yes. And I didn't know she associated legends with death. Um, so <laughs> that's, <laughs> and she said she told me, bitch, I ain't no legend that she lied about that. She ain't never say that. But she said, I got the battle scars to prove it. Ain't nothing wrong with being legendary, Sherry. Yeah, I want these people to grow into their age and, and, and grow into it beautifully. And legendary don't mean old either. 
It don't. You know it don't. Saying? LeBron James, 38. He's legend. a whole legend. Legendary. Yes. You know? yes. Listen, Wendy Williams, legendary. Well, she's 60. 60. Oh, damn. I didn't know that. I, well, she got why, battle scars. Why would you, I too. said LeBron and you say Wendy Williams. No, because like, I'm Wendy talking about she's 60 a legend old. in media. I don't yes, care. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? So that that's all oh, I meant by that. Boy. But um, congratulations to my baby, Tiana. She's doing her thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. All and right. that is the news. That's just with the just mess. with the mess. It sure is. And her news is real. Allegedly. Listen, and, and look, y'all, like, I'm I'm really, really doing good. I'm killing it today. As far as what? No, I'm asking as far as what? <laughs> because reading You can't you can't tell people because then now they're gonna be looking. Just just go with no, it. No, they already looking. Uh. They be looking and then that's why I got these long nails too, because people got had a problem with me. <laughs> To follow the words? Yeah, people had a, a problem with me reading with my finger, but it's like, um, what do you want me to do? Like, if I'm looking down and I'm, it, it helps me read better. Some people need their fingers, so now I got these long nails so y'all can see I'm doing it in style. Like, I, there's nothing wrong with that. All we need is the gist of the story. That's all. That's all, yeah. yeah. But, but you it's are. fine. You I'm going it. really, you really killed good. It. Yes, you did. I keep telling Thank Sim, you. stop. Sim is one of our producers. Stop giving Jess so many words. No, no don't ever say that because then you're making me sound stupid. No. Like, <laughs> don't give Jess too many words. Now, no. they do the rundown. They do the rundown and they it's explain it points. just in case. It's bullet yeah, points and then they explain it. It's stuff that I didn't even know. It's stuff that I don't be knowing that she puts in for me. Because if I'm reporting, I have to be right. That's right. Thank your you. news is real. Yeah, so That's thank right. you, Sam. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, who are you giving your donkey to? Man, we need the Building Brains Daycare in St. Cloud, Florida to come to the front of the congregation. I know it's Black History Month, and you want to teach kids about black history, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do those type of things. <laughs> we'll discuss. All right, we'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You make sure you tell them to watch out for Florida, man. Florida, man. The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. Yes, you are a donkey. A Florida man attacked an ATM for a very strange reason. It gave him too much money. Florida man is arrested after deputies say he rigged the door to his home in an attempt to electrocute his pregnant wife. Police arrested an Orlando man for attacking a flamingo. It's the breakfast club, bitches. Donkey of the day. With Charlemagne the God. I don't know why y'all keep letting him get y'all like this. It's, it's not me, Duval. It's y'all. Uh, Donkey of the day for Tuesday, February 6th goes to the Building Brains Daycare in St. Saint Cal- Cloud, Florida. What does your Uncle Charla always say about the great state of Florida? The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida, and today is no exception. Now, it's two reasons this story really grinds my gears. One, because it's involving kids. Two, because it's Black History Month. See, Building Brains Daycare decided to do a Rosa Parks reenactment. And when you are the only black child in the class, it's a pretty safe bet, a pretty high probability that you are going to be playing Rosa Parks in this reenactment. Now, keep in mind, this child is two. All right, these kids are two years old. Doesn't matter what age the child was, honestly, but just for the record, the child is two. So it makes what happens here more egregious. Would you like to know how the Building Brains Daycare Rosa Parks reenactment turned out? Well, let's go to WESH2 for the report, please. I can't believe this is happening to our daughter. That's what Jay says his reaction was to seeing the photos posted in their daycare app for Building Brains Academy. I was just like, there's no way they're doing this in a two-year-old classroom. Mm. It was our daughter who had her hands restrained behind her back by another child wearing a police vest. There were also photos <clears throat> appearing to show his daughter using finger paint, seeming to simulate her being fingerprinted. Bree, the mom, said she spoke with the school's director. She goes on to say, you know, the teacher, she's not from America, so she doesn't understand the true context behind mm-hmm. Rosa Parks. Mm-hmm. It goes back to what you allow within your facility, mm-hmm. what you approve as your curriculum. The daycare sent us a response saying in part that the play happened spontaneously during a lesson and was not part of authorized curriculum. They also said that the administration had no prior knowledge of it. Now, see, if this would have happened to my child, it would have been so many other moments in black history we would have been reenacting. Uh, The L.A. riots, okay, Nat Turner's rebellion, uh, the Sharkeesha fight tape, okay, the 2000 Source Awards, the the Nipsey Hussle victory slap, okay, if you would have done that to my two-year-old, which I have a two-year-old, by the way, if you would have done that to my two-year-old, then the daycare workers who are there to supervise and monitor the safety of my children would have needed someone to supervise and monitor their safety as well, because I'm coming, and I'm coming to hand out Travis, Kelsey, and little Boosie haircuts. See, I don't even understand the point of this reenactment. These kids are two years old, so you are perpetuating the cycle of white supremacy and black inferiority into these kids. You shouldn't have been doing this at all, but why not let the white kid play Rosa Parks 
Parks and let the black kid play the police officer. You know why? Because this reenactment wasn't about Rosa Parks. It was about reinforcing the caste system in America. You know what the caste system is? A form of discrimination based on the social hierarchy, which is determined by a person's race. This is strategic. Okay, y'all need to change the name of y'all daycare from Building Brains to Bird Brains Daycare. Mm-hmm. All right? Sidebar, why do we call people Bird Brains? That could be highly offensive to birds because bird brains is defined as stupid, foolish, or scatterbrained people. That don't ever seem like birds to me. There is nothing stupid about birds. Birds are smart. Birds can fly. We don't know how to fly. So who really the dumb ones? Now, the parents of this two-year-old have pulled their daughter out of this school, and rightfully so, because there is no reason for this. All right? When you're two years old, you should be learning shapes and animals, your five senses. You should be taught about colors, but not black is inferior and white is superior. And do you know they had the nerve? You heard what the woman said. They had the nerve to tell the parents that the teacher is not from America. Mm. She doesn't understand the true context behind Rosa Parks and the civil rights movement. Well, why the hell is she teaching curriculum that she doesn't understand? I don't want my kids at two learning about Rosa Parks yet. All right, don't go chasing the civil rights movement at two years old. Stick to the blueies and bubble guppies that you're used to. I don't even know what to do in these types of situations. I really don't. The parents contacted the NAACP. The NAACP said they contacted the Department of Children and Families about the incident. Basically, nobody knows how to fix the problem. Okay, nobody knows how to fix the problem of racism in this country. So I can't even fault the NAACP or the Department of Children and Families for not doing nothing. Because what is there to do? All right? It's not a problem that we have a problem. It's a problem if we don't deal with the problem. And I just said that because it sounds good. I don't know how to solve the problem of racism. Nobody does. Because if we did, I wouldn't be telling Red to please let Kathy Griffin give Building Brains Daycare the biggest hee-haw. Please give this giant jar of mail <laughs> the biggest hee-haw. <laughs> let, let, let Chelsea Handler get some too, man. Hee-haw! Hee-haw! That is way too much Dan mayonnaise. Chris Rock got something to say? Cracker-ass cracker! Well, well, I ain't visit my girl at the fast food restaurant in a while. Chris Rock! Oh, okay. Okay, just making sure she still got a job. That's all. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm. So what country was the, the teacher from? They wouldn't disclose that? I don't think they said. They just said she's not from this country. No, she's not from this say, country. They didn't say where. Mm-mm. Mm. So they so should they reenact something else? Should yeah, they, you said should to they make, close the border. What'd you say? I didn't say that. I said, oh. should, I said mm. should they reenact something re-enact else? Reenact that. Uh, reenact like what was that uh, the steamboat thing Mississippi where it, the dude threw the hat up in the air? Oh, that would be a good that would one. Be a good reenactment. That would be great. You play with one. people, children like this. That would be another good mm-hmm. reenactment too. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're That's right. Crazy. And you can't expect parents not to flip out when situations mm-hmm. happen like this. Yeah. In fact, it takes a lot to keep you cool. And you probably feel you need to keep your cool because yeah. you're a black parent and you don't want to go in there wilding. But think but about it. And then you might need to grab a folding chair. But the parents only found out about it because you're two years old. Your, your two year old's not telling you, hey, yeah. I play Rosa Parks. Oh, no, today. they got pictures. But they got, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they got, they got wow. the nerve to take pictures and put the pictures online. Oh, wow. How about this ain't part of the curriculum? <laughs> Just got these people going rogue like women from Baltimore. And don't know about. <laughs> I ain't say nothing. <laughs> First of all, because you know people from Baltimore, they just go rogue. Yeah, we 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 go rogue. We 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 think, and that don't work nowhere else but Baltimore is what they say. (laughs) But that's crazy. They don't know what to do. The the pictures up online. Can nobody? They they said they didn't want to put put the pictures up, but the parents didn't want them up. Okay, mm-hmm. but they already did post them, right? I don't know. I ain't seen them. Yeah, because how the parents found out. That's how yeah, they, 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 found they, out. they put a, probably put it on the. So a that site. is a lawsuit. Somebody That's something that they can somewhere. do. Yeah. All right. Reached out to the NAACP. The NAACP reached out to. They don't know what to do. How many A's? Double A. Double A. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey today. Yes, indeed. Now, when we come back, this was online, and one of our producers actually seen it, I I think because it had to mention food. But uh, this young lady said, she put on Instagram and said, this boy said lunch is on him today and asked what I wanted. I said, I want a salad. And then I get a Zelle text for $15. I sent it right back because, huh. $15 $15 is crazy. Baby, you can keep that. <laughs> You'll be hungry, Miss Lady. <laughs> now, so let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Ladies, what are your thoughts on if if, if guy, a guy sends you $15 for lunch? Is that an insult? It's not an insult. I was just telling him this probably ain't enough with you know the way the way inflation is out here. I was reading this morning the Big Mac combo in goddamn Connecticut, 1759. 
So the salad probably double that because you know everything healthy is costs more in America. But is that a super size? Is that a large or is that a medium? They say a Big Mac combo, seventeen fifty nine. Jesus Christ, eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Ladies, if a guy says you fifteen dollars for lunch, is that an insult? Are you sending it back? Let's discuss. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Just Hilarious. We are The Breakfast Club. Yes. That's it, Charlamagne God. Charlamagne God, we are The Breakfast mm-hmm. Club. We'll leave him out. <laughs> leave him out. <laughs> now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about something that was online that Big Mac, one of our producers, actually sent us. He said, uh, it was from this girl. He said, this boy said lunch is on him today. Asked her what she wanted. She said a salad. And he sent $15. She said $15 and sent it right back. Baby, you can keep that. <laughs> so 800-585-1051. Ladies, what are your thoughts on this? Is sending $15 an insult or I just what? feel like, girl, you could have asked him for a little bit more money. You didn't have to send it back because now what you going to do, dummy? Like, what What are you going to do? Like, all right, because, I mean, maybe in his mind, a salad didn't don't cost more than $10. But like you said, there's inflation and there's mm-hmm. all of that and stuff like that. Okay, then she need to get something to drink. But... I just like that he even thought to send her something. He thought about it. She yeah. might be hungry right now, you know. All right, whatever. Here go fifteen dollars. I I, I would have at least given her twenty, but you don't send it back because now what you gonna do? But he probably thought the salad was ten dollars. Like if you go to That's Aqua to I go said. to Bodega, salad is is very cheap, yeah. right? If you go to what's some places, just salad or thing, salad is like twelve dollars, right? So he thought he was sending fifteen. Like yo, here's a little fifteen dollars. Waters a dollar. Get yourself yeah. three waters. I ain't see nothing wrong with that. How I old are these people too? By the way, we, we know the age. We don't see an age, but this sounds like some young behavior. She, she looked like in her twenties. Yeah, yeah, cause for her to post it, of course it was young behavior. Yeah, sit your unappreciative ass down. Right, okay, your ungrateful ass. Nobody had to send you nothing. How privileged are you that you can tell someone that fifteen dollars isn't enough? Y'all have no idea how bad people are doing out mm-hmm. here in these streets. Some people would love to have that fifteen dollars. What? You know but, what I'm saying? But yeah. even if it's not enough, all you gotta throw is a couple dollars to it. That's you was, was going to have to eat anyway. I'm That's not giving it. you nothing after that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take back the 15 because yeah. what do they teach us in life? If you're not appreciative for what you have, you won't get blessed with more and what you got will be taken away. I'm going to retake. I'm going to re, take this $15 back mm-hmm. and now your dumb That's ass can starve. That's it. And she called him a boy. I want to like a penguin. Hello? Hi. Hey, what's your name? Keisha, right? Who said your weave stink? Keisha. Tisha with a T. Hi. Hey, hey Tisha. Tisha. Tisha with a T. Tisha. Oh, Tisha. 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 Oh, I think the T is silent. Oh, Lord. How y'all doing? We good. So, um, good. I, I work in a city, so if a guy sent me fifteen dollars for lunch, um, that's not enough, and I'm gonna let him know like fifteen dollars is not gonna get me anything. I'm not gonna send it back, but I'm definitely putting it in my group chat. Like, yo, this nigga is cheap. Fifteen dollars not gonna get you anything. Are you? Are we being realistic? Not get me or you anything being smart? in the city. Damn, it's not gonna get you anything. Lie. You can't eat nothing for fifteen dollars. And you work in what city? Not in the city. Not in the city. You work in New York. Not if I'm good. What'd you say? You, so you work in New York, right? You can eat with fifteen dollars. What? Now. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I don't get a nothing. Right. If I'm trying to get a salad and a drink, that's already like eighteen twenty dollars. Yeah. So why you don't got two dollars or three dollars? I don't want fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to be nice and saying I got you today? No. It's a little light fifteen dollars. No. Y'all so ungrateful. No. Yeah, I don't no. understand. I'm going to make a joke like, what am I supposed to eat with that? But, you know, I'm not going to send it back. Yeah. Are you going to stop talking to him? Let's be honest. Um, hmm. I wouldn't stop talking to him, but I would know in the back of my mind, like, oh, he's a little cheap. How do y'all know when God testing y'all? How you know Crazy. that wasn't Jesus? You just met Jesus and don't know it. <laughs> and he gave you $15 and you're like, nah, I don't want that blessing. See, I can't get nothing. Okay, yeah. I mean, you're right about that. I guess the second date will really show it. <laughs> See, but I'm, I'm talking like I'm looking right now. You could have got a Chick Fil A eight count for twelve dollars and eighty five cent. It come with the fries and the soda for twelve dollars. I love it. See what I'm and saying? Then, and then if I'm at work and I'm trying to get that delivered, that's thirty two dollars right there. Uber Eats is thirty two dollars. Yeah, no, Uber, no, Uber Eats and DoorDash. Listen, all of that is expensive. What? She not lying about that. Tax, tax, the tip, tip, whatever the driving fee, thirty two dollars. Man, it sounds like we need to grow a garden, man. That's what I'm getting <laughs> yeah, from all of this. Yeah. Jesus. All right, Miss Keisha. Roll and Tisha. keep it 15. Keep your 15. All right, Tisha. That's why you're going to be single for the rest of your life. Uh-huh. Hello, and it who's this? Like who was in the back, too. Like, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hey, what's your name, bro? My name is Jonas Black. Jonas Black. All right. Sounds like you sent somebody $15 for lunch before. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. And did it come back to you? Absolutely. You hit? 
Absolutely. No yeah. <laughs> but why 15? Like, why don't you stay? Like, why is 15 the number? Listen, listen. My thing was this. At the time, it was just what I had. You know what I mean? You knew you had to call me. You couldn't call nobody else. Whatever I got, you going to get. So why not be appreciative of that? Knowing that, all right, you know what? He sent me the 15. Let me go get my chopped cheese instead of my salad. You know what I mean? Get, get a, you know, get something to drink on the side and enjoy that. Maybe later on, you know what I mean? I get a little more money to go eat something else later. I actually think that That's is a attractive. good play to tell a girl to be like, look, look, all I got is 20 on me, but you can get 15 of that, boo. That is attractive. He said, you knew you couldn't hit nobody else up. You hit me. You Word. know, whatever I got, you going to get that. <laughs> yeah, Tisha. So, but I got 20, right. but you can get 15 of my 20, though. Mm-hmm. A Cobb salad in Chick-fil-A is eleven nineteen, and that's Cobb salad with the nuggets. That's $12 Ooh. right Why are you keep sending people to Chick-fil-A? Because I'm, I'm just looking because I like Chick-fil-A. I'm just saying that, that's a good, good. That's a good price. Mm-hmm. Chick got better everywhere. salads, but Chick-fil-A is good. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That ain't too cheap. $15 yeah. is good. It what if is. people don't want to eat fast food? What if they on some healthy stuff? A they? salad is a salad. A salad is a salad. It's all the same. 800 If you're just joining us, we're talking about this lady online. She was uh, complaining about this boy. This is what she said. This boy said lunch is on him today and asked what I wanted. I said a salad. He sent me $15. I sent it right back because, baby, $15 is crazy. You can keep that. We're asking, what's your yeah, thoughts? How, how you start turning into a real house of a land just now? <laughs> baby? <laughs> but baby? But <laughs> baby? <laughs> oh, you can keep that. Let's talk about it. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's Topic Time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're talking about uh, something that one of our producers found, Big Mac Online. It uh, has to do with food. He said, uh, this lady said, this boy said lunch is on him today and asked what I wanted. I told him I wanted a salad. He sent me $15 and I sent it right back because, baby, $15 is crazy. You can keep that. So we're asking, what are your thoughts? Now, Jess said, it ain't that bad, $15, right? No, it's not. And that's probably all he had. But you ain't mad at. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Jocelyn calling from Indianapolis, Indiana. Hey, I'm good Jocelyn. morning, Mama. What's your thoughts? Good morning. So, I want to say I feel like she's being ungrateful, okay? Because she had enough $15 to get some extra toppings, maybe some add-on shrimp from Outback. I would have been grateful. I would have been happy. There yeah, you go. go. And it's the thoughts that counts. Like, he even gave you that and didn't have right. to give you nothing. And that's why this woman Thank on the phone going to get blessed with a man. Because that, cause I, I hate Oh, I got, that, I got one. Shout out to my man. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah. Is not mobile mechanic? Hey. I know that's right. Shout out to my man. Because I, I hate when people <laughs> test each other in relationships. But this is kind of like a test. You give somebody $15. Yeah. If they're ungrateful and unappreciative, that's just their character. That's yeah. who they are. That's true. Mm-hmm. Hello, who's this? Hi, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, good, good morning, morning, Mama. What's your thoughts? Um, I'm just confused by we're defining that as an insult. I would leave with gratitude, simply. You would what with attitude? I would leave with gratitude. Be oh, grateful. gratitude, yes. Yeah, yes. Said, yeah, Absolutely. Gratitude. Absolutely. Hello, who's this? Hello, this is Jess. And where you calling from, Mama? I'm calling from uh, Virginia. All right, and what's your thoughts if a man sent you $15 for lunch? Um, I don't find it insulting. If the lady asked for a salad, I mean... A salad isn't that much. He probably thought like, oh, maybe the salad's only fifteen dollars, so here you go. Right. I'm gonna run with that fifteen dollars if I gotta add five more dollars and I'ma just Then you'll just add it, right? You'll (laughs) add it yourself, right? Yeah. Right, right. You know, and then you can tell them like, you know, I, all right. So I put five more dollars to it, babe, or or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But not to to just right. send it back. Okay, you can keep that. Right. I'm gonna collect them receipts and be like, here go, here you go, babe. There you go. <laughs> there you well, go. Thank you, mama. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Rock, man. Call from Columbus. Hey, Rock. What's your thoughts, brother? Man, social media just got these women hyped up, gassed up. They just. Yes, sir. It gives them a false sense of entitlement. You know what I'm saying? They're bigger than who they actually are. That's right. Mm-hmm. And what happened to gestures and the thought that counts? You know, these women like that, you definitely avoid them. Red flags screaming all the way. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, yeah. brother. Yes, sir. I mean, the, the biggest problem is is the fact that if a meal of lunch is costing you $20 or over mm-hmm. $20 every day, mm-hmm. it's too expensive for people out there. Telling and I know I, I know you, you you could say it was a long time ago, but growing up as a kid or even in my 20s, 
I can get a meal for $3. I can get a meal for $5. And the yeah. biggest problem is these people yeah. is ungrateful. And it's yeah. crazy to me how people who are broke are financially struggling are the ones that are so ungrateful. Your mm -hmm. financial circumstances might change right. if you was appreciative of what you have. I understand not being satisfied with your job or your current situation, mm -hmm. but appreciate what you have so you can get blessed with more. Listen, and then these are also people who are looking at what everybody else got and what everybody else is doing also mm -hmm. because to go and report something like that on Instagram or Twitter, wherever it was, you know what I'm saying? She's seeking validation from other people as well. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. to agree with her. And I bet she got flamed in the comments. Very much. I bet she thought she was, I bet she thought she ate with that tweet. Hello? <laughs> what? Yeah, I bet she did thought she ate, but she was hungry, so she didn't eat. She sent the $15, 15 right. back, stupid. Absolutely. All mm -hmm. right. Now we got uh, Jess with the mess on the way? Yeah, we do. No, no don't. Jess tired. No. Leave Jess alone. <laughs> Jess, Jess, around 8.30, just gonna crash out. She's gonna get her birthday energy in about another 10 minutes. But <laughs> right now, she ain't got it. Don't she ask her. It. Don't even ask her. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. All right. We'll be back right at that. Just with the mess is, is coming up in a minute. Don't yeah. move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Yes. Let's get to Jess with the mess. Jess is real. 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 Jess is going to bring you numbers. Jess with the mess. I knew this was real. On the Breakfast Club. I know they know the difference. Keep it a stack. Romeo Miller beef with rap snacks. Okay, so Romeo has been the face of rap snacks since 2002. I had no idea that the snacks came out in 2002. That's, that's what's up. That's a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. The bags of chips. Each flavor of chips or popcorn feature a rap artist, if you're not familiar with that. Um, I think we've all seen a bag of rap snacks or two. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't receive a check from them until 2023. By 2022, Romeo's bag of rap snacks chips made roughly 4.2 million. Um, Romeo claims he never received a share of that money. He even says rap snacks first time communicating with him directly was in 2023. Allegedly, he signed an agreement with them in 2023. They dropped his pay rate and replaced his chip bag with his father's image. Uh, yeah. Romeo, over, yeah, he reportedly only made 150,000 from the brand over the last 22 years. Rap snacks is worth about 35 million though. Mm. Uh, he's calling out the CEO, James Lindsay, for not making sure he was paid directly. The CEO and Romeo's dad, Master P, are friends. Drop that gem real quick. Um, he claims Master P only became supportive of the business when it started making money. Um, Romeo seems to be threatening a lawsuit, but he all, he did he did tell me that he's really not trying to take it to court. He just wants to like you know put a little bit of pressure on the situation. He he said, um, which by the way he shares all of this on his story as well. The culture seen me help grow this product since a child, and rap snacks literally use my image and likeness without ever paying me. I don't care to be right publicly. I just want what's done in the dark to be right. There's a reason they re they refuse to turn over the documents with all of my sales. They do not want those records public, which will happen if and when I take them to court. Flo Rida, he, he gives uh, an example uh, of Flo Rida. He said, Flo Rida got 80 M's from that energy drink and his face wasn't even on the product. What do you think I'll get when we see the official books and leave it in the hands of a judge? Um, just a backstory on a Flo Rida situation. Flo Rida sued the Celsius energy drink brand and won $82.6 million. Um, Romeo claims his dad was receiving payment on his behalf and told him that it was being reinvested back into the company. He claims the CEO said, I paid somebody and that's that. Romeo's response to that was, imagine if your boss, imagine your boss paying your salary to your cousin and saying, oh, well, right. LOL. Now, I do understand it. This this seems as if, I mean, because what the CEO saying, I paid somebody and that's that. Um, back in 2002, you weren't an adult. Uh, so I, I would only imagine that his dad was his power attorney, you know, because mm -hmm. like, like I would get all my son, everything that my son is only 11. He, I get money. I would get all the money for for him until he's like older, right? You know, for businesses and stuff like that, because yep. he can't legally sign underage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um, this this would seem more like a beef with his dad. That's um, what it seems like, in my opinion. And if he's not being paid, you know, and and if his dad is taking his money, claiming that he's reinvesting it back into the company, I mean, that's just wrong. But I just I just want it to be. I want the blame to be rightly placed. Yeah, they just got to figure out. Um He's got to figure out the business of it all. Because if the For CEO sure. was supposed to pay who he was supposed to pay, and that's who he paid. And that's who he paid. That, that's the CEO yeah. fault. And that's just Nah, but is. if he did the deal with, with Master P, did with mm -hmm. Romeo's dad, and, and, you know, he paid. You know, now yeah. it's up to, to dad to figure out where that money goes. But, yeah. you know, 
the, the messed up thing is dad might look at it like when that money came in that's what some, that's what handled our whole family mm. you understand what I'm saying so mm-hmm. even though that you are the son I made you that way I invested in your career I invested in your whatever it is you being a star I put you in movies I did all that so now when the money mm. comes in and maybe I'm short on this side so like in, in our house in our household is is mm-hmm. everybody's money and if mm-hmm. that money comes in and they got to pay the mortgage mm-hmm. if they got to pay for your brother's tuition yeah. if they got to pay for your tuition you know you just got to see but I couldn't see myself suing my dad I ain't speculating about them people business man that's true Monique too. already came yeah. in here before and told me about that okay? who Monique <laughs> so, Monique yes Leonard. 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 Master P and Leonard. Romeo Leonard. no just oh, about I was gonna say what speculating about people business I don't right. know how the business oh, yeah. is you know what I'm saying Romeo saying something CEO saying something but would you sure Master P got another side would I sue my dad yeah. if it was business yeah, yeah. Probably <laughs> yeah, what it is. I, I would Why? as well. You see your dad? I mean, yeah, I would definitely see my dad, and I'm could, sure that my, my dad, dad would sue me if it was over something. You know, business is business. I couldn't sue my day, dad. My dad would never sue me. Oh well, that's cute. Not even. A but I, but <laughs> you know, it's a, I, you know, I wouldn't want to. I but if want it's to, something yeah. that happened in this business, you know, it's like because Romeo claims he never received a share of that money, you know, and that's that's what that's but, a twenty year business. But you just know business. not to f with your dad anymore. But you know, you, you know at that. the end of the day, your dad raised you. He put you in these schools. Your dad did so much for so you. And if yeah. it was a bad business move, you just know not to f with your yeah. dad. Yeah. And then let's this ain't your ask, friend. You know, this is your father. And then it doesn't matter. They put food on the table when you was a kid. Let's dad. I'm not. I'm a grown man with children now. No, that, right. that's oh, you no, not me. Oh, that's crazy. Crazy. Oh, right. I've been wondering. <laughs> no, people have been saying wow. that. I'm like, not my look. Nah, why y'all? Well, I'm wow. getting mad when people say that about you. I'm Relax. Like, oh. I'm talking about Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> she said that so fast. I'm a grown no, man with stop. children. No. Whoa. Oh, my God. Y'all some clowns. No, that, that's what I'm saying, though. I hope it gets handled. And this is not the first time that he and his father has had money issues. He, right. Remember, he came out uh, last year sometime and said he never got paid for the movies that he was in. Like, You're come right. on. Yeah, you made me a star, but at what point am I the star with money? Well, I got to be a broke star, Dad. True. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't agree with that. I don't like it. Yeah, if you're not going to do business, if if you're not willing to do, if you're not willing to see the good and bad of business Mm -hmm. with your family, then don't go in business with your family Mm because it's not going, it might not always be good. Yeah. And you might have to do things like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope that that situation um, gets righted. Um, This is something I wanted to share. So yesterday I I just went through, I was going through all the urban blogs, you know, Shade Room, Mm -hmm. Hollywood Unlocked, Neighborhood Talk, On Site, Baller Alert, you know. And I see in the comments that, you know, it's a lot of black on black negativity and hate and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we we beat each other up. Even if somebody does something good, like an act of service or like a duty or something, or somebody put on makeup, they they look their best. Mm -hmm. We're in the comments. And I'm saying we're because I'm a part of the black community. um, But I'm just saying, they they eat these people alive. You can never do anything right. You can never look good. Right. Mm-hmm. You can never be confident. It's like we hate when each other thinks anything great of ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. And so then I go to like E News and you know all the other bro- blogs that are not black. Um, uh, e News, Variety, right. like mm-hmm. some other things, right? And I go through those comments. And they hate us too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, yeah. They, I thought you were gonna say they love us, but no, no, no. <laughs> they I hate wish. Us. I wish. You know, the black celebrities getting from all sides. Yeah, all sides. You know what I'm saying? And and it's not often that they post us, but when they do, oh, I'm talking man. about we. Yeah, they they jump on us. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like this is not what I follow you for. And I and I was reading some of their voices and stuff, and I'm like, wow, they really can't stand. Uh, so that's but they the thing. support their own though they support their own and because I also went through those comments as well they will not say anything and, and if they do say any, something bad it's, it's not like crazy like how we attack each other or how mm-hmm. they attack us so my thing is why do we have to do it when we're already getting it from another side I, I just was really emotional up thinking about it like 2 o'clock in the morning like 3 o'clock in the morning I was like wow so when you go to like the urban blogs or whatever mm-hmm. it's like I would love to see more positivity there because when we go when I go over there to the other blogs they give us crap too like they gave they had a field day with Jay-Z speech at the Grammys well that's why Tyrese said he wanted to be Latino I ain't gonna ever go there with it I'm but, not gonna but go that, that. Shut up, man. But that's what he was trying to say. He, he was trying to, to say. He was trying to say in in, in that uh, community yeah. they support each other more, and he mm-hmm. feels like in our community uh, community we don't. Now he mm-hmm. went far when he said he ain't gonna be far. black no more. But yeah. that's agree. what he meant. I think, that's what he meant. I think there's just a toxic culture that exists mm. on the internet, and humans don't like to see other humans do good, especially if they doing bad or not as good. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's just a toxic culture, and I think that you know it, it is uh it is exasperated when you're. When you're black, yeah, you know it's what I mean? Because like Jay Z will probably get on that stage, and it'll probably it'll probably be some people saying like, 
There's bigger things in the world you could be talking about other than other than Grammys. Mm-hmm. You could be talking about some real issues, mm-hmm. right. you know. And then you have right. other people that'll be like, "Oh, third world problems." Oh, it's so you're so yeah. upset about the Grammys. Like you're, you're billionaire Jay upset about the Grammys. No matter what it is. Yeah. So I All just right. wanted to make that a point, y'all. Start shedding some positivity for us. That's why right. you just us. gotta do you because people are gonna hate regardless. Absolutely. Just do what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. That's right. All right. Well, that's Jess with the mess. All right. Up it next, is. the People's Choice Mix. Let's go. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's Black History Month. What we doing? Listen, man. You know, every day my man B Dot drops the podcast. I didn't know. Maybe you didn't either. On the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. And today, B Dot will be walking you through some of his favorite exhibits at the National Museum of African American Music. He had the pleasure of visiting the museum during the Thriller Possibility Summit in Nashville, Tennessee, which the Black Effect puts together with Nissan. And you know that summit connects HBCU students with leaders across the STEAM industry for mentorship, conversations on career, branding, and networking opportunities that can lead to success post-graduation. So take it away, B-Dot. One nation under a groove. Ah, getting down just for the funk of it. What's happening? B-Dot here. We're here at the Thrill of Possibility Summit hosted by Nissan and the Black Effect Podcast Network in the National African American Museum of Music. I'm going to show you my three favorite exhibitions. So we start in the Wade in the Water Room. This room symbolizes hope. How you say? You got to remember, man, in the early 1600s, when the first enslaved individuals were brought to the United States, they had their own tribal music. They had their own sounds. They had their own religion. But by the time they got here, all of that was beaten out of them. So this music, it's a sound of hope. Growing up in the church myself, like I could have been out there in the streets, but mama had me in the pews. So I can relate to the gospel music and the hope that it provides for individuals. But then we transitioned from hope to survival after the Civil War. We met at a crossroads. In the words of our good brothers from Cleveland, meet me at the crossroads. See, this room was very important. This was an introduction to a lot of things. One, it was an introduction to black folks actually playing music that they wanted to play. See, up until this point, they were forced to play music just to entertain their overseers. But now, it was a freedom in the music. Because at this time, they were given freedom, but they weren't necessarily free. The only way they could express said freedom and said sadness and said happiness is in the music. That's what founded the blues. Up until that point, it was just thought that white folk would never like black folk music. Oh, but that wasn't the case. See, white folk love that blues so much that blues created country music, as well as jazz, as well as hip hop. See, the Crossroads Room, it interconnects communities. It's actual crossroads for different cultures. This is the One Nation Under a Groove Room. You dig? All jazz. It might be the smoothest room in the museum. You dig what I'm saying? And it just shows how jazz was integrated into black culture that eventually went on to the world. You even got white folk over there playing jazz music. They love the jazz. And then think about all the stars that were birthed from jazz. I mean, you think Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, Miles Davis, jazz music from ragtime and minstrel shows to civil rights and bebop. You dig what I'm saying? It's a blending of the cultures. I can't wait to see what's next in this place. This whole exhibit has made me want to just sing, dance, but this area is my space, okay? This is where the radio jockeys used to be. You dig what I'm saying to you? Big shout to black folk in radio. Big shout to the Black Effect Podcast Network. Big shout to the Thrill of Possibility Summit. And big shouts to the National African American Museum of Music right here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm about to keep going around. If you get some free time, I think you should come check it out. It's pretty doggone dope. W-D-I-A. Signing off. Okay. Salute to my man B Dot and make sure you subscribe up, to the B-Dot. I Didn't Know Maybe You Didn't Either podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. All right, when we come back, we got the positive note at the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Day two, Jess. You already How know. How you feeling? I'm tired. feeling good. You see, tired. <laughs> about to lie. She tired. For no reason. I'm feeling good. Tired as hell. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired, but I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. It's all right. I'm going to adjust. 
That's right. You're right. Four more weeks, I'm going to be coming in in pajamas. <laughs> I told you. But you are a morning person, though. That is. What, I am. Yes. Hey, but morning, really morning, morning at home. But when you got to get up and get dressed yeah, and put and makeup like, on and yeah. do glam and hair. Mm -hmm. A little yeah, tired. And go through a tunnel and everything. <laughs> go through a tunnel. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, definitely. All right. <laughs> I say sweatsuit. Yeah, I said six weeks yesterday. I said four weeks earlier today. I say three weeks now. Mm. <laughs> well, leave us on a positive note, Charlamagne. Listen, man, this is for everybody out there who is waiting for somebody to see their worth. I want you to know that your value doesn't decrease based on someone's inability to see your worth. Remember that. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done? <laughs>